draft season, baby. And I know this is so many Ravens fans' favorite time of the year because a lot of y'all have been watching college football for a long time and you see your prospects come up, you see them grow on the collegiate level, and now they're getting ready to make that jump to the pros. And then as a Ravens fan, you're wondering, all right, EDC, what you got for us? Especially when you look at recent drafts and how a lot of these guys have panned out and unfortunately how some of them haven't panned out. But it's an exciting time, a super fun time, too, just wondering about all the possibilities. And now another possibility. It crept up for the Baltimore Ravens, and it is at the wide receiver position. And I know as Ravens fans, we always want wide receiver. We want wide receiver early. And I know for a lot of Ravens fans, this year is really no different, especially with the uncertainty as of this recording of one Odell Beckham Jr. So we should know what happens with that within the next six days because the Baltimore Ravens, they got a decision to make with him. So we'll see what goes down with that. But a possibility of adding a wide receiver from Texas with some crazy speed, some record-breaking speed, literally, because he now holds the record for the fastest 40 time ever, that being Xavier Worthy Is he worthy of the Baltimore Ravens picking him, whether it's in the first, in the second? Will he even make it to where the Ravens have that option? Well, we won't know till we know, but the Baltimore Ravens did schedule a top 30 visit with Xavier Worthy, and that is very, very exciting. And I'm going to tell you why in just a minute, but before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, turn your notifications on, and leave a like on the video like y'all have been doing, which I really, really appreciate because it does help out a whole lot. Team Keep It Clean. We know the Baltimore Ravens got Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers got some good speed. We know the Baltimore Ravens got Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman, he got some good speed, too. We know they got Nelson Aguilar. Uh, we know that they also got Isaiah Likely. They got Mark Andrews. But then you think about the possibility of adding an Xavier Worthy in there. And initially, the first thing that I had heard about him, because y'all know I don't watch college football like that. The first thing I heard about him was the 40 times. So I'm like, ooh, <laughs> and, and I'm like those GMs that fall in love with a 40 time. But a 40 time is not everything. And that's something that I've learned over time. Because with a 40 time, yeah, that's you running your fastest speed, but you're not on a football field. You're not in pads. You're not going up against anybody. You're just running. That's it. That's it. So a 40 time, in my opinion, it does not tell your football speed. Because football speed is different than just running on a track. They can correlate with each other, but they are still very, very different in my opinion. It doesn't tell about your hustle. It doesn't tell about your pursuit. It doesn't tell about your toughness. It doesn't tell about, well, it does tell about your acceleration. But it doesn't tell the whole story. So what I had to do was watch film on Mr. Worthy to see what he was really looking like in Texas. So I decided, I said, you know what, let, let, let's, watch some, let's watch him against some good competition. So I pulled up the game from last year, and I watched the whole thing. And it's crazy because, again, y'all know I don't watch college football like that. So when I was watching that game, it was like I was watching it for the first time, and I was excited. I'm like watching all these plays when they have it and stuff. I'm like, oh, man, this is fun. And it came down to it, but I watched the Texas versus Alabama. And that was a real, real fun game. Of course, Texas pulled it out. Um, they were leading for a while. Then Alabama, they crept back, and they took the lead. And Texas took the lead. And Texas, they ran away with it. But anyway, uh, watching that game, Xavier Worthy, just seeing everything that they do with him. Now, comparison. Who I would compare him to in the NFL? Now, y'all might get thrown off a little bit by this comparison, but this is what I saw from him, and it reminded me of him so much, and it made me sad because we don't know when the next time we're going to see this player on the field. He reminded me of Keaton Mitchell at the receiver position. What I mean when I say that, obviously both of them have crazy amount of speed, crazy amount of speed, but... What I saw from Xavier Worthy is the same thing that I was used to seeing from Keaton Mitchell with the Baltimore Ravens. They are crazy fast, but when they cut, when, when they, cut, when they accelerate, when they catch the ball, it's smooth. they don't lose speed on anything. They make a turn, they catch the ball, they turn off, they don't lose speed, they don't decelerate at all. They only get faster. In this game, um, he did have a couple of drops. He had one drop that would have been a touchdown. He did get open, though, uh, and it was in the red zone. It was like I think they had the ball like maybe on like the five-yard line or something like that, and you was threw the ball to him. Uh, he was open. He ran the perfect route. He was wide open. You was threw the perfect ball, but he dropped it, unfortunately. And then there was another ball where it was, uh, I think, either second or third and long, and you was had to float a little bit. He had to put it up to where only, uh, only Worthy could get it and the defender couldn't, and, and he dropped that. But – that was it. Like, he caught everything else. 
thrown his way. And what I loved about watching him is seeing how they use him in a million different ways. That part reminded me of Zay Flowers. Xavier Worthy was somebody that Texas, they had to get the ball in his hands one way or another. And the way that they did that, sometimes they would throw him a pass at or behind the line of scrimmage. Because the screen, you know, with the Ravens, they did that with Zay Flowers all year. But then they would throw him the intermediate pass. And then, of course, you know, they would go for a lot of those deep balls as well. And, A, that's Lamar Jackson all day. You know he loved throwing the deep ball for sure. And to have a wide receiver that doesn't just have the 40 times speed but has the game speed as well, that would help out a lot. Like a lot of people, they, they get on Lamar. Oh, he's inaccurate with the deep ball. He can't throw the deep ball. He be missing on the deep ball. And while it is a very low percentage throw, a lot of people forget that, but that's okay. I think what Lamar Jackson really just has been missing when it comes to the deep ball, because, again, this, this wasn't an issue before, but over the past couple of years, it's been a bigger issue in a lot of people's eyes, Lamar Jackson with the deep ball. But what he's really been missing, I know a lot of people say a big body receiver. Lamar need a big body receiver, need a big target, especially if he's throwing a pass so he can throw a jump ball. If he's throwing it and it's a little off, that big target got a big catch radius that can help make Lamar's job easy. And I agree with that, but... What Lamar Jackson, in my opinion, especially when it comes to the deep ball, what he could use is some straight up speed again. And that was Hollywood. That, that, that's why when, when Hollywood was here, you ain't hear complaints about Lamar Jackson's deep ball. Reason being because Hollywood got some crazy speed. Zay Flowers is fast too now. But Zay Flowers, he's shifty. And I will continue to say this. I think that um, Zay Flowers got some real good speed, but I think Hollywood straight line speed, he's faster than Zay Flowers. Like straight up, he's faster than Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers is way more shifty than Hollywood, but straight line speed, hey, go get it. That's Hollywood all day. So I think with Lamar Jackson, that was one of the biggest reasons that him and Hollywood, their connection was just crazy. And it was literally crazy from jump. From Hollywood's first game. And, and I guess it's a Broward County Ravens type of thing. Shout out to the Florida Ravens. Because we see it. We saw Hollywood's rookie year. That was Lamar's second year. His first year being a full-time starter. But Hollywood came first game of the season. He kept His first pass went for a big chunk of yards. It was in Miami. We were at that game, by the way. That was super fun. But his first catch was a touchdown. He went crazy that game. And then, of course... We saw that deep ball just continue with those two. And then when Zay Flowers, when he comes through, the him and Lamar's connection, it was good as well. So I think with, when you think about the possibility of an Xavier Worthy, it's fun to think about. Um, just everything that he can do and the way that they use him. And I know the Baltimore Ravens, they will definitely find a way to use him as well. What was crazy about when I watched that game, I know college coaches, especially Nick Saban, um, I know he did his homework on Xavier Worthy for sure. I know he had his cornerback studying him like crazy. Hey, we can't let this guy get loose. We know he got speed. We know he can get open. I'm sure he had them locked in on, had the, his cornerbacks, the Alabama cornerbacks locked in on Xavier Worthy. But it's one of those things where you know what this player can do. You know what you should do to stop this player. But he's still just so fast that you can't do nothing. You, you, you can't do nothing. Because, and he, he's tricky too, because you want to play back so he don't beat you deep. But then if they get the ball to him early, that yak is going to go crazy. It, it, it's going to go crazy. Then you want to press him and to, to bump him off his route, to disrupt him. But if he gets behind you, <laughs> it's, it's game over. And that's exactly what happened. Because he was beating them in so many, he was beating Alabama in so many different ways. Because they got him involved with the deep ball. They got him involved with the short stuff. They got him involved with the intermediate stuff. They got him involved in a lot of different ways. And just thinking about that is super exciting for me, just envisioning him with the Baltimore Ravens. Will he make it that far? I don't think so right now, man. Because, again, y'all know a lot of GMs, they could be high on a player. They could see this player in action. They could be like, oh, that player's a baller. Uh, but then... The 40. 40 times they boost players' stocks like crazy. And I know I've heard it be said that this is a loaded uh, receiver draft. 
and that's a beautiful thing, especially, again, depending on what the Baltimore Ravens do at the position with Odell Beckham Jr., because that is a significant role to fill. Because Odell Beckham Jr., he had 30-something catches, 500-something yards, and a couple of touchdowns. And while I know for Odell Beckham Jr., it's like, oh, that wasn't really much, but I believe that was his highest average per catch in his career now we know again with odell beckham jr was you gotta put a little asterisk on that but still odell beckham jr he did contribute a bit not as much as we had hoped for but he still put up again over 500 yards 30 some catches and that that's what you would hope for from a rookie i mean you would obviously hope for more but in an offense that would have Zay Flowers, in an offense that would have Mark Andrews, in an offense that we hope would feature Rashad Bateman more, there's Nelson Aguilar, you, you would hope that a rookie, if, if those were numbers put up by a rookie, then that would be that would be all right. It would be all right, depending on the, the, the volume of passing and whatnot. But with Xavier Worthy, that 40 time, if he was even possibly in the realm of maybe, and I, I don't know what round he's expected to go in. So I've seen some mock drafts say, oh, yeah, he's going to go in the first round. I've seen some mock drafts say, oh, he might make it to the second. But with those 40 times, again, they boost people way up. So even though the Baltimore Ravens, they are hosting Xavier Worthy on a, um, on a top 30 visit. And again, with those, you got to be selective because you only got, I think you only got 30 of them. Um, I don't, I'm not so sure and, and not very confident that he will make it. Uh, to the Baltimore Ravens if they I don't think they would even have the opportunity to select him but thinking about it is really fun and hey it ain't over till it's over and anything possible till it ain't possible no more now another thing with this with them hosting him on a top 30 visit you know Baltimore Ravens and, and really every NFL team but especially the Baltimore Ravens they love throwing whew, smoke screens they love that they do it all the time especially around this time of the year this is I think this is Eric DeCosta. And I think he said it before. This is his favorite time of the year. But he is a smokescreen king. He does it with the draft. He does it with free agency. He, do, he does it in so many different ways. So could this be real? Could there be real interest in Xavier Worthy? It could be. Or this could be a diversion from somebody else.